photographers. Do you think the cameras cost too much? Paul Chatto, the creator behind the Peter Paul Chatto channel and shows like Science Tech Stand Up, joins me today. Thanks, Paul. Hey, uh, nice to be here. And it's, it's the Paul Chatto Empire. I've oh, changed it from I, I, <laughs> nice to hear that you've expanded. I, and I yes. hope that's limited to uh, keep your liability in case of. Yeah. Well, yes, I, I, I've gone into the Ukraine. <laughs> Was that a good idea? I don't know. I have about one or two people viewing me there. I need viewers, so right. I'm desperate. Desperate. Are you, do you speak Ukrainian? <laughs> no, no. Actually, I speak Russian. Hungarian a, a bit. Ah. In fact, when I, uh, I didn't speak English until after I was five years old. Oh. I only spoke Hungarian here. I was born here oh, in Canada. Oh, English is my second language, too. Yes. I only spoke Dutch until, or the language of the Netherlands. Do we still call it Dutch? I don't know. Well, you have four different ways of describing your country, or that country. That's right. Holland, Dutch Well, land. Holland actually <laughs> is just a couple of provinces. Right, then but not the from, Netherlands. Right. Yes. So I, I, I started speaking English once my parents stuck me into school. Now, I, I've forgotten a huge chunk of my Hungarian, but as, as an effort to push back on potential Alzheimer's, I'm learning Hungarian again. Oh, that's great. Kívánok mindenki. Hogy vagy? Köszönöm I'll have to invite you for dinner with my other U Hungarian friend. Oh, you have friends. Well, that's novel. You never uh, told me about that. I, I yeah. <laughs> so, so, well, Paul, start. My, <laughs> we're insulting each can other. Can we get it started? <laughs> yes, let's, let's my get viewers started. are always complaining that cameras are too expensive. So, what do you think? Are the prices unreasonably high? I've been thinking about that lately, actually. I think uh, perhaps. The cameras that have got mechanical shutters can kind of get away with the idea that maybe they're worth the uh, price, but I'm sure the mechanical shutters are not made by human beings. They're they're automated anyway, right? Uh, but there's a kind there's a kind of a you know allure. But the cameras that are coming online that are going to be professional and full on, uh, uh, you know, without mechanical shutters, I think Sony has one, doesn't it? That's yeah. That's without but, sh but the shutters. It, that's those not those the ones only, don't need to be expensive. That's not the only component in the camera, and it's not as if that's the most expensive component. The most expensive component in most cameras is the sensor, not you know, which is why True. full frame is more expensive because it's th that's a harder die to create, more prone to failure. But I, I can't I can't talk to that. But I mean, I did have an old uh, Fuji that uh, broke, uh, and I smashed it apart, and it was just a circuit board. Yeah. Well, I wow. saw a, a takedown or take apart or breakdown of the uh, A7R4 or just the four. Anyway, it looked complicated or three. Sorry, it was the three. It looked, okay. looked complicated. Lots of parts, very intricate. Um, but uh, but just let back up a little bit because what does too expensive mean? So is is a thousand dollar camera too expensive? Two thousand. Sure, where, where, but now does, we're in the we're in the category of what are your tools cost? Uh, people complain about the cost of Photoshop, but if your if that is your the tool that yeah. you're using, that is your livelihood, then paying a thousand bucks a year for you know the the thing that makes you money, uh, you shouldn't be complaining about it. And I guess same thing with your camera, right? I mean, if you're a professional photographer and you're making a couple hundred thousand dollars a year, which all you photographers out there I know are doing, right? <laughs> <laughs> but I think, however, many of my viewers are simply um, hobbyists, people who okay. enjoy the hobby of photography. So, um, you know, h how should they uh, assess the value? Like, what is the value of a of a camera to someone who's just a, a casual photographer? Well, I think the value then uh, is relatable to whether your spouse finds out. <laughs> well, potentially, hopefully, you know, we have conversations with our spouses that allow us to purchase the things that bring us some uh, happiness and joy. But, well, so you I, know what they you know what they say in the twelve step program? It's easier to apologize, uh, ask forgiveness, than to ask permission. That that's my rule when I buy my gear. Right. Okay. <laughs> or you hide so, well, the Amazon so, box. As you go downstairs and right. don't let them see it. 
But, well, you know, I, I mean, the, the question for me is, like, so you have a number of dollars in, in your right. uh, budget to spend on leisure things like photography. So if that's something that brings you uh, pleasure or enjoyment, what is the price cutoff uh, for that? Like what other leisure expenses do you have and how do they... You know, I, I don't know. Do you do this on a per hour basis? The, uh, how do you determine what's too much money to spend on something that you enjoy doing and something that you expend a lot of time doing? Well, that's that's a really good point. Uh, don't you think that anybody in the realm of camera purchasing also seems to value something that is more expensive in that their 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 mental uh, calculations are that if it's more expensive, it's better, and they're going to feel better about carrying around this six thousand dollar Leica that only shoots in black and white. It, 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 don't you think there's an emotional component in in buying something that's more expensive? Well, what, what the question you're really asking here, however, is why has LVMH not yet acquired the Leica brand? You know, so that it is up there with Louis Vuitton purses and, and Hennessy cognac. Uh, that's a good question. Because clearly there are some cameras in, in the market that truly are uh, luxury products. That the, Well, again, it's not fair. I mean, if you have highly paid uh, engineers and technicians creating your cameras in... Um, you know, a, a well-paid environment in a Western European country, clearly you're going to be paying them more. Clearly you're allowing them more time to do uh, their work and that costs money. So if, uh, I, I don't know, was that? A... Then, there's, then there's the design aesthetic, which now you're getting into the Louis Vuitton, Vuitton uh, territory, but it's a part of the you know, shooting or part of using a camera is the enjoyment of the device that you have in your hands, and 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 how much fun or uh, you know enjoyable is it to to use? Fuji has become famous for recreating the early film experience, right? Right. That's a it's not necessary. Nikon has jumped onto. Right. Just that's recently. Right. Yeah. But is that necessary? So. Now, are cameras too expensive? I guess it's, expense, it's as expensive as you're willing to, to pay for it. I don't think the cameras need to be as expensive as they are. But as we also discussed, there's a lot fewer cameras being sold compared to 10, uh, you know, 20 years ago, overall. Compared to 10 years ago. Canon uh, yeah. is projecting that their sales this year will be less than 10% of the uh, sales they generated in 2010. That's on, an enormous loss. But on the other hand, I think in this digital realm, people are actually uh, overturning their cameras more often than back in our film day. I mean, because I would get a F1 and it would be my camera for 20 years. Right. But the technology is changing much more rapidly now than it was then. But right. tell me, how, how much are you prepared to spend on a camera? Like, like what... You, you know, what's your budget when it comes to thinking about, I need a new camera? And I'm, I'm going to say that you That's a good question. are likely generating some revenue, like, like yes. I am, from uh, using your, your camera. But if it was just a hobby, leisure time pursuit, what, what's the amount that's a fair investment? I mean, how much do you spend um, on other leisure activities? Uh, you know, how much hmm. do you spend on theater tickets or movie rentals or what you know whatever it is that you so which know. category are you asking for for me are you t asking me to put on my uh, hobby hat and yes. are you asking yeah. me to put on my pro hat well the the pro hat's a totally different thing i you know th that's n I, I think that for most pros cameras are really inexpensive if you're generating revenue hmm. and it's an I, interesting I, I point a video about this if, if you're generating a hundred thousand uh, in, in revenue, then a $4,000, $5,000 camera is not a large part of your expenses. Plus, you would your amortize that over other. three years. Likely. So the camera would actually be less expensive per year than just the right. full price of it. 
Yeah, yeah. So a hobbyist would not be able to write that off. I would say I wouldn't want to pay more than a thousand dollars for a hobbyist camera. I'd rather be in the six hundred dollar kind of range. Okay. Even but a fixed lens, I'd be okay with. But how much do you spend on your lawnmower, and how much time do you spend with it, and how how much do you enjoy that? I mean, is, is it fair to compare other, you know, purchases like that to? to well, we got camera? our we got our push lawnmower from Lee Valley, so I spent about ten thousand dollars on it. It's it's. <laughs> <laughs> it is deluxe. It's made in Germany. Um, yeah. It's it's got the handcrafted. finest handcrafted steel. It's just stunning. Right. Push lawnmower. Right. The Leica of lawnmowers. The Leica of lawnmowers. <laughs> uh, well, well. So, so so, but there it is. Uh, you know. So, uh, and then, if if you think that you know, six hundred to a thousand dollars is fair, most cameras are above that price range now. But what additional feature? Could I add if if I had uh, improved the eye autofocus? If I had improved the weather sealing? If I had improved the image stabilization? Would you be prepared to spend an, another five hundred dollars? Well, like what? How much can I convince you with new technology to I increase your spend? To spend to bring it up? Wow, ah, geez, that's a hard that's a hard question. Again, it. So you can ask someone who is not a photographer, who is only going to be buying a hobby camera, <laughs> what they want to spend. There's also the non-photographer who wants the most expensive gear that they're going to stick in the closet after they do their kids shoot with it, or their, the one vacation they take. <laughs> <laughs> then so they're they, going this... on holiday with their rich friends and they want to right. show that they can compete in the same. Correct. Tax so there's, bracket there's, by having there's that the category, Z2 correct, with the, or the right. Sony A or something. They have to get the Sony A because they'd be embarrassed otherwise. But then it well, goes immediately it, into well, the closet. Well, exactly right. And then you just sell it on to G. And so then there's people like ourselves who uh, probably want a simpler camera to carry around with on a vacation and don't want to be carrying around the big rig. Right. So that's a logical, thoughtful choice. Uh, where we know what the compromises are. So, but in but, cameras, smaller isn't always more expensive. Uh, what about the Sony, the latest Sony yeah, yeah. vlog the, camera? That's like twelve hundred dollars Canadian or, or something. The, yeah, like that. the current RX one hundred. Yeah, whatever. That's model. an expensive that's little an expensive camera. Expensive camera, right? Right. Well, okay. But do you, do you so think that? It, so do you think that is properly priced? Do you think the value of that is good? Uh, well, because all of the other RX. 100 models are still in the marketplace. I kind of think that it is because if you don't want uh, all those latest features, you can go back two, three, four generations and pick up one of those at a lower price. And that that maybe is the best illustration. I'd love to see Sony's sales chart for those pre-existing, like those older generation models that they continue to have on on store shelves. You know, like w what percentage of their um, purchasers do go for the high end, which per percentage go for the less expensive uh, models that have fewer features. But I think the ultimate answer to your question is going to uh, take place as the market is cannibalized even more and whoever is remaining are going to get desperate and the a mass manufacture of uh, cameras are going to be available to a larger uh, uh, assortment of manufacturers as they go com as they go completely digital without any kind of mechanical uh, shutter devices uh, you know uh, requirements at all but, uh, that's okay, going to be so and then, going then we're going to get a massive we're going to get a massive run of cheap cheaply done cheaply made cameras that are going to be fairly ca uh, capable isn't there already a massive run of cheap cameras that are fairly capable but I, i'd say you know and, and you're kind of focused on this uh, shutter a mechanical shutter issue. I don't think that is the most expensive okay. component in a camera. But what, do you have any idea what it costs to manufacture no. a camera? I had a look. No. I, I, I did do some research. I apologize for that. No, no, uh, no problem. So break which, which what model and how much does it really but cost? I, in but parts? I couldn't find anything. That, oh. Yeah, there, there was no uh, even unauthoritative estimate wow. of what the cost, uh, what, like what the bomb, the bill of materials, 
for a camera might might be. So that, do you want to estimate what what that might be as a part of the camera? Like the there's a whole bunch of other things that of course get added after that. There's the uh, cost of advertising. There's the cost. Uh, th there's the share that goes to the retailer. Sure. The share that goes to the wholesaler. There's all the shipping that's involved. There's a, there are a whole lot of costs other than just the hardware. And then of course there's the amortization of all of the firmware development and you know whatever licenses for things like JPEG and, and MPEG that they're buying to mm -hmm. to be part of the camera. So it's not. And, and I suppose SD cards also have licenses. But, there are a whole lot of moving components here, and I, I don't think the margins in the camera business, until you get to the very high end, are all that high. I, I think that you know the um, profits at camera companies, and this is a particular problem for Nikon that only makes uh, cameras, that, that that's really their exclusive uh, purview. Um, you know, whereas companies like uh, Fujifilm that also has a division that makes medical imaging equipment and also is involved in a lot of other things that have some way to sustain their business whereas Nikon does not and so so, so do you do you think they make more good. do you think, think uh, camera companies problem. make more money off their lenses than on their cameras so as a, from a margin there's do they have larger margins on lenses than oh, cameras uh, yes yes okay uh, for everything except the kit lens Maybe uh, one of your viewers actually knows of a iFixit breakdown where someone's taken apart a camera and... I, I would love to see that. If, if yeah. you do have that information... Um, please know, send I, it to, to Martin. That. Yes, it's, it's just please comment. Uh, and so then, just to follow that up, after we've wrapped all of those costs, is there a brand premium? Does just the fact that it says... Nikon or Canon or Sony or Panasonic or Fuji. Does any of those do any of those brands? And I'm going to keep Leica aside. Uh, have a brand premium. Do, you know, is there some hmm. markup that they can add that says yes, it's Nikon, so we can add ten percent. I would normally say yes, but I think it's getting desperate out there for many brands. Yeah, I think the only two brands that can mark up based on their brand is probably Sony and Canon right now. Oh, I really would have included Nikon in that in that group. I'm surprised to hear you. Uh, no, I, I think their I, markup I think is just through incompetence. Now, I know we're nearly through this video without mentioning yeah. Apple, so I'm going to throw them in. We don't, don't want to ignore them. Speaking of the Louis Vuitton of computers. <laughs> But isn't Nikon the Apple or Louis Vuitton of cameras? Except Apple's really successful, and we know that, <laughs> and we want to be part of that uh, that sphere. I, right. I'm not so certain. I think people are nervous about Nikon. Right. Well, they, they are nervous, but Nikon, like Apple, has a very dedicated True. group of fanboys who are going to you know, stand up for that brand regardless of what... The, so are the they being are are they being overcharged? Is the are the fanboys being overcharged? Are the fan persons being overcharged? Well, they're Nikon? not because they think that it's worth it. It's the other, <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean, honestly, yeah. the fanboys are going to pay it, but it's it's the other uh, people. Are the rest are, are those who are not, you know, as dedicated to the brand, uh, suffer uh, paying a, a premium for the for the brand? Uh, probably. Yeah. Probably. And, I, and then now we're getting into the question of what is the real value of a camera to a, a hobbyist. This was That's a very interesting. Yep. Yeah, I know. And I don't you know what? I thought we had an answer for this, but now I don't think we do. Right. And, and maybe we should just leave it at that as an ambiguous Heisenberg uncertainty principle ending. Heisenberg, that was the big balloon that blew up over <laughs> New Jersey. Uh, yes, that's correct, Martin. Thank you for being so yeah, up to date I, on your. <laughs> I, I like it when I get your obscure references. That's that's right. Don't don't worry about quantum mechanics or physics at all. Quantum no. mechanics. <laughs> uh, we should have a quantum camera. That would be good. We need more quants on this show. We do. Quants are good. Quants are good. <laughs> Thanks for joining me. Always uh, fun to. Uh, what you were falling apart? 
Hmm? You wanted me to join you? What? I said, thanks for joining me. Thanks yeah, for being oh, part see, of yeah. this video. So oh, I, I was trying oh, I see. to bring a nice, smooth conclusion to it. There our you go. Well, I screwed that up, too. I'm sorry that I. Thanks for having me on again. Cue that problem. Can I do my extra? Sure, go ahead. <laughs> I enjoy reading and replying to your relevant questions and your civil comments. Please share your thoughts below. Now, YouTube recommends that I ask you to subscribe. I'm going to produce more videos regardless. Becoming a member helps me retain my non-sponsored hashtag, so you won't hear me plugging a product or service, and you won't see those annoying mid-roll ads either. The join button below makes you an instant member. Please choose the option that feels right for you. Thanks for watching. Paul, thanks for joining me. Thanks for being had. What? No, that's not right. Bye, Martin. There's something in there. Bye, Paul. There we go, right at the end of the bat.